And I'm not surprised to hear that extradition hearing is going to take a few days because today's Friday and it's going to be a holiday. So he's going to have to cool his heels in the local jail there in the county where he was arrested. And then Leita is probably going to have to take over once that extradition actually happens. Whether he'll fight that extradition, sure, why not? I mean, he may want to secure local counsel there and may want some time in that local prison before he actually ends up taking a very long journey, more than likely by aircraft, because I think they're going to want to get this process going as soon as possible. Um, time starts, by the way, Nicole, time starts, the clock starts when you make that arrest and you actually make the charge. It may be why they were waiting if they had him in their sights so that they could get as much evidence procured before they actually went ahead with the process because as you and I both know, we all have a constitutional right to a speedy trial, which means the clock begins ticking now as soon as that indictment goes through. So that's why these extradition, extradition hearings will be important to get you know underway as soon as possible. But they will say this because there are cases like John Benet Ramsey, where there was bungling going on. And so public officials, our police, our prosecutors, our investigators are public officials. They are publicly paid by us and we want to make sure that they're accountable to us. And the media oftentimes holds, uh, holds them to, this, to the standard to which they, they must operate. And so in certain cases, like John Benet, uh, that scrutiny was critical and it did um, sort of unveil a lot of very messy procedures that happened at the beginning of that case in the investigation in the first 24 hours people traipsed all through John Benet Ramsey's house spoiling evidence um, and spoiling the collection process and spoiling a prosecution if there is ever going to be one in this particular case as days and days went on and I'll say some of the state media that was released by this uh, police agency became very, very stressful and frustrating for media outlets that aren't used to getting state uh, state media, um, you know, releases. They're used to being able to have one-on-one -on -one and then question and hold, you know, investigators accountable. So tomorrow will be week seven. You were spot on, Nicole. Tomorrow is week seven uh, that those mur those murders occurred. It was a Saturday night slash Sunday morning, um, and that is excruciating for those families to undergo, you know, so much confusion and obfuscation when it comes to information. And it's also difficult for people who know crime reporting and they know what they're used to in terms of the standards of information. This was a very tight-lipped investigation and at times became, well, I have to be honest, it, I began to wonder if they had any of the goods. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's a real relief there's um, that there is a, an arrest. And once we get any of the, um, you know, slight details that we should be getting at this news conference, uh, perhaps that will assuage many people's concern about why they have picked up this particular person on the other side of the country. Uh, they will likely give us something to tell us why. But like I said earlier, don't expect a narrative. Don't expect the play-by-play -play on what happened in that house. Don't expect what entrance. Don't expect what room came first. Don't expect which person was targeted. I think that will be stuff that will uh, will continue to be held close to the vest because that's the stuff only the killer would know. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.